Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Floor Planner. My name is Bob. As I always say, I'm here for customer success. I'm here to support you all as you develop your technique and utilizing Floor Planner and your platform. Um, so I have some updates to share with you. Uh, we'll do this for March 2024. I've got like five different updates to mention today. So let's get started. And let me show you where to find those updates. I'm going to go ahead and take down my video so we can get that out of the way real quick. So where to find them? When you log into your floor planner platform, you just go ahead on the left-hand sidebar and just go to the dashboard tab. And on the right-hand sidebar, then you have a feature that says new features in this tab. And there's a more button inside there. If you select the more button, you actually will be redirected to an entire list of all the new features as they're occurring inside Floor Planner. And you can scroll through this and take a look at previous updates that have been out there. Uh, these are the ones we're gonna be discussing today. And where we left off last time was back looking at the copy paste options that we were talking about using your control C and control V tabs on your keyboard and also going ahead and um, working with that copy paste feature within floor planner, copying and pasting between multiple designs, multiple floors, etc. But today, let's take a peek at these other five that are out there. Um, restoring deleted designs made some improvements. the way you can manage your designs um, and a great way to be able to restore in case you've already deleted the design maybe by accident so let's showcase where that is real quick i'm going to go into my floor planner account and let's go ahead and open up one of my projects let's see if we can find something out there for designs just to give you a glance at where that would be located of course when you have a project open and you have one project open at a time. Upper left-hand corner, when you hit the project tab, it tells you all about that particular project and multiple designs that you may have created. Remember, you can build for an HD level project or higher. You can build up to 10 different designs per floor. So I've built six designs on this particular project. And if we go to those designs, there they are. Just open them up. And I can toggle between any of the independent designs that have been created. And there is a really great button in there for show deleted designs. This is a new feature. And there's one that actually deleted previously. And if I wanted to bring it back, I could just go ahead and hit the restore button down there. And sure enough, it is brought back into my project again. So you can restore a deleted design, not a problem. Uh, next feature we want to take a peek at out there would be top bar changes and moving the floor drop down. The multiple floors, again, for an HD level project or higher, a uh, new location as to where the multiple floors have been located, where that toggle switch is. So if we just, again, go back to my project over here, it's the same idea that, of course, we go to the project tab over here on the left-hand sidebar, and this is the new location right here at the top of this tab. Not only the multiple designs that we were talking about just previously, but the pull down menu is for the multiple floors up here. As you want to build duplicate floors for an HD level project or higher, building up to seven stories or seven floors. This is where you can choose which floor you want to be working on at that time. Then let's take a peek what we have next for our third feature that's been added. A new look at, for notifications um, as they've been um, posted across the top of your dashboard up here. System notifications in the dashboard now have a more unified look and placement that better fits with the overall design of your dashboard. And we're also looking at ah, the presentations update. We've had the presentation feature inside Floor Planner for a while, but it's been updated 
Um, I think you'll find it much more fluid. I think you'll enjoy uh, the new features that are within this presentation tab. And you're building a slideshow presentation, not unlike PowerPoint presentation, PowerPoint, but it's more of a more of a PDF format, if you will. But as you build any particular project inside Floor Planner, of course, you're creating your exports and your images. Um, and of course, your, your products themselves also have their imagery that are associated with them. So you can pull from that entire database uh, as you've created them and add this all into a slideshow presentation and make a nice unified presentation. So let's actually take a moment or two with this presentation guide and actually uh, maybe build one together. Let's go back to our My Floor Planner account. And this particular project, I think we're going to go ahead and show you that when you actually are on your dashboard, your home page, which is where your projects tab is listed on the left hand side, when you select it, all of your projects will show up. If you go ahead and single click on any one project, don't double click, it'll open the project, of course, or hitting open would open the project. But by single clicking on it, just once you gain this left-hand sidebar. Within this left-hand sidebar, there is the tab over there for presentations to make a slideshow presentation about this particular project. So if we go down to the presentations tab, I've already made a couple just uh, playing around with this a little bit, but I'll show you how to build one from scratch. Just hit the create presentation tab up here in the top. And we're going to go ahead and allow it to, well, let's give it a different name. We'll call it Bob B for today, just to give it a namesake. Um, if you happen to be an enterprise account out there, you will be starting your presentation levels at a higher resolution, which is a premium level. Um, for those of you that are working out there in the basic accounts, um, basic presentation, it's a lesser resolution that's available, or you can always upgrade it to a premium also. Um, let's go ahead and create the presentation. Now, when you create a brand new, it's a slideshow presentation. So it starts with a cover page. With a cover page out there, there's some information that comes in automatically, and you can also make some modifications to this first slide. So if you select the slide itself, you'll see over here on the right-hand side, you have the ability to add some um, different font styles, some different uh, font sizes, uh, what information you want to showcase in there, client name, a title for this particular page. And you can also choose a background image. So for custom branding, think about it. Um, a JPEG or PNG image of any sort of maybe ghosted background or your company's logo, et cetera. Um, I've actually played with this actually in PowerPoint where I've gone ahead and opened up a PowerPoint slide and oriented it with a company logo, et cetera, and a couple stripes of color um, of however you might want to create your own background because PowerPoint will allow you certainly to export that as a JPEG or PNG image. And so I made one just for example out there to say, well, what if we want to make this a little bit more interesting than just a white background? You can insert a background image for the cover page. Just hit choose and go ahead and find an image that you've created. I made this little demo piece right here. Say open it as a JPEG image and actually inserts it as the background. Um, this could have certainly in this page, this sheet, this JPEG image that I inserted could have been your company logo here in the center, et cetera. And here's the text again, that's being uh, assigned through your cover settings over here. And then continue to build, you know, uh, maybe I'm going to call this a uh, residential uh, project. Um, just to give it a title. And we could also, you know, a client name. Uh, maybe it's Mr. And Smith. Oops, Smith, sorry. <laughs> and you could sort of, you know, change the font style on that tab. You could also change the font size. I choose to have your, this is my name and, and my email address as the creator of this particular presentation, um, which I could choose to go ahead and have it turned off as the creator of details. 
or change its font, et cetera, and size. Um, or if you didn't want to have the client information in there, you didn't have to have that in there either. So you have the ability to make some modifications here. Then the next slides are actually going to be your presentation slides, and you'll be adding them one at a time. It starts with the cover page, and then you'll actually have your slides of your presentation. There's a tab up here in the upper right-hand corner that you can also set some global settings for those future tabs and the additional slides that we're going to be placing inside here, including a background out there. Um, and you can even include a disclaimer on the bottom of each page. So this is some additional information that would be a master setting for all future slides, or we'll just maybe leave this blank for right now and we'll just go for adding a brand new slide without making modifications out there. So this first slide, uh, let's think about this. You're gonna be adding individual slides. This is the first one. With the first slide out there, we could go ahead and change the layout. Right now the layout is one inserted image. Um, so we can go over here and say, well, let's change the layout. The layouts are mm, kind of like photo album layouts would be with different positioning of different squares um, as to what information you want to be adding. Maybe the first page you want to have out there is uh, maybe something specific to the job. So if you hit the edit pencil down here, this is where we can actually choose, well, what will that page be? Is it going to be a custom image that you're going to uploading, a JPEG or PNG image of a site plan or an image that you have of that particular project? Um, also, maybe a 2D floor plan that you've created inside the particular project that we're referencing, or any of the export images that you've made as 3D renderings, or if you've built a style board already associated with this project, product. Product would be, of course, any of the furniture items or the accessory items that you have inside Floor Planner in this particular project, materials and finishes, colors, paints that you've assigned inside this project, and any text information if you want to add some custom text to this page. Um, so you choose as to what subclassification you want to be including into this option here. I could just say, well, we're gonna go ahead and make it a custom image. And then, well, what is that custom image? I can go ahead and find it, go choose some custom image for some reason related to this job, um, just to grab a JPEG, whoops. Maybe this is uh, a lifestyle image. And maybe it's my inspiration page that we're inserting uh, to go ahead and showcase inside this first slide. And then maybe we go to our next slide and choose, you know, maybe it's a different layout page that we're going to place inside there. Maybe this layout page is going to be something more like a few different options on that particular page. Maybe this particular tab over here is going to be maybe a 2D floor plan. So any 2D floor plan that might be associated with this particular project. Um, if I had created one, it would give me an option to go ahead and select from this particular project. And sure enough, I did make one. There's one right there. We can go ahead and select it. And we can also move it. And you also have the ability to resize it. And maybe these other tabs over here, we want to maybe showcase some of the products that are in this particular job. Um, we could go over here and say, well, let's make this a product feature. And we want to go and select the product that happens to be in this particular design. Um, maybe it would be something like, ooh, there's a lot of items inside this particular product. Uh, maybe this core base over here. So if I select it, there's my item. And I can, again, use my scrolling in and scrolling out to resize it. And you can choose as to, you know, what image you want to be showing, the perspective image of it or the front image or the side image, other side image, <laughs> top image, uh, et cetera, um, to make a modification out there. You can then maybe pick another tab and say, well, maybe I want to do a product. Maybe I want to do one of the materials that's in this particular project and go select the material. Uh, these are the materials that are being used in this product. 
maybe that top pattern, I want to go ahead and show it. So again, you can just keep building, selecting which category, and then you're actually, again, pulling directly from the specific project to make this storyboard, if you will, a mood board presentation as a PDF slideshow. And once you've completed all of your individual slides, you can certainly go up to the export PDF tab in the upper right hand corner. And it's actually created the presentation. We're just opening it up as a PDF document right now. And you built your document for presentation. Has a lot of ability to allow you to be as creative as you need to be. Uh, within this particular format. Those of you that happen to be the enterprise accounts currently, uh, and you have administrators with your accounts as enterprise accounts, um, there's a feature inside there that you can actually develop templates for your team. So you can set a branded standard as to how you want to go ahead and actually brand your company to make sure that everybody follows suit with the same. Otherwise, uh, the rest of us, we're making our own customized individual presentations. If you also go back real quick to our update list. And our last feature out here, just a couple days ago, actually, um, the search suggestions, when you're actually looking for objects, uh, there's a new little pull down that's trying to help you with some subcategories, uh, some additional selection to narrow down what you're looking for. Let's take a peek out there real quick. And let's go back to our project. And go into our objects. Maybe not exactly the slide I want to be looking at, but that's OK. It's just that new design that we just brought back um, after being deleted. But same idea. Let's go over to objects over here on the left-hand side. And inside objects, if I'm doing a search maybe in living room furniture, and maybe I'm looking for a sofa. And sure enough, here's that new pull down. So it's starting to say, do I want sofa, sofa beds, large sofa, sofa cover, sofa suite, et cetera. It's trying to narrow down the scope of the categories uh, of all of the, oh, 280,000 plus three-dimensional objects that are inside Floor Planner's general library. And also certainly, you know, the additional brands um, that are also available to you. So I think that search engine will certainly help you um, narrow down your search just a bit. Remember, this is always a Boolean search engine up here. So if you wanted to go ahead and you know add another adjective after that, uh, maybe if I just you know, typed in something like a color, white sofas, um, you can start uh, allowing the Boolean search engine also to narrow down your, your search as you're trying to go through many of our objects that are available to you. And I think that is gonna wrap us up for today. Yep, that's our last update at the moment. Um, look forward to seeing you hopefully at uh, another video possibly for the next month. And also don't forget that we have our live webinars also available to you that you can join for free for our intro webinars or advanced tools webinars and also our 2D, 3D camera settings. So if you want to register for any of those live webinars for free, they are available to you on your dashboard back at your homepage. And on your homepage dashboard tab, they're up here in the upper right-hand corner where the little radio button down there for all the three different flavors of live webinars that are available for you. And just hit the join button. Again, always free you can go ahead and register for them as many times as you'd like to. And they are just another part of your training that's available, um, again, a free service. And also don't forget to go to the floorplanner.com website if you need to, because we have inside there, floorplanner.com under the support tab, your links to the live videos that have been recorded, the product updates that we were just talking about just now, 
uh, PDF document that you can download. The webinar is another, another outlet to go ahead and register for the same that I just showed you from your dashboard. There's a contact form over there also on the right-hand side. And there's also at the very bottom, something kind of new if you hadn't seen it, um, FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, um, another source uh, to gain uh, information as you're developing your technique as Hyperwork Planner. Again, appreciate your time today and look forward to seeing you possibly at one of our future webinars or certainly back at these recordings. Until then, have a great day. Thank you so much.